Joining us right now to talk more about all of that is former chief of staff under Bill Clinton and the chairman of McClarty Associates, Mac McClarty. Good to see you, sir. Thanks so much for joining us. Good morning, Maria. So Congresswoman Blackburn is calling herself a hardcore, card-carrying Tennessee conservative, just the kind of person the president needs not only maintain control, but get past the gridlock in Washington. Mac, what do you think the message is going to be tonight? Well, I think President Trump will talk about his tax cuts, and we'll certainly talk about the economy. He'll make the case that he needs a Republican Congress in both houses. However, Governor Bredesen is a well-known, well-respected figure. You'll recall Senator Corker was quite judicious in his comments, uh, not quite endorsing Governor Bredesen, but certainly saying some nice things about him. So this is a candidate that is well-known to the people of Tennessee, and right now he's leading in the polls, as you noted earlier. This is going to be a close race, following on the Doug Jones race in Alabama, the Connor, Connor Lamb race in Pennsylvania. So we've got a lot of very... Uh, hotly contested races, and the president's going to be fully engaged. This is somewhat, somewhat of a referendum on him and his presidency. Maybe, but what, what, what do you say about the idea that going into the midterms, this whole idea of a blue wave has basically taken a back seat to now gains mm -hmm. that the Republicans have had, right? Because of the economy, people feeling better, more money in their pockets, and then there's, of course, the the FBI and the DOJ scandal uh, around the 2016 election, uh, a negative for the Dems. Do you, do you still expect that blue wave that we talked about six months ago? Well, Maria, as we uh, talked last time, it's still a long way uh, before Labor Day and then the elections in November. So a lot is going to happen. And the president clearly has the ability to change the tenor, change the subject, and not just this president. That's the bully pulpit. You've got the uh, big high-stakes potential summit meeting coming up in Singapore and so many other things. So we've got a long way to go. But there's no question the Republicans and President Trump will make the case that the economy is doing well. The tax cuts are part of that. The Democrats will make the case we need a change. Uh, and, and the energy right now is still on the Democratic side. But it's still a, a good way to go before the election. Mac, it's Dagan McDowell. Speaking of change, we had morning, Democratic Senator and Chairman of the Democratic Senatorial Campaign Committee, Chris Van Hollen, saying last week that Senate Democrats welcome support from former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton and her husband, former President Bill Clinton. And all I can think about is, yeah, right. I'm sure the Democrats want Hillary Clinton helping campaign for Joe Manchin in West Virginia since that worked out so well for her there. Well, she just stumped for Andrew Cuomo last week right. in New York. She is getting she more did. involved. She does seem to be getting a little bit more involved. Well, I think like uh, is usually the case, and we saw this, frankly, uh, when President Clinton was in office in the first term, there are certain areas of the country where the president is a positive. The same goes for President Trump. And there are certain areas where a candidate would prefer or feels that he or she needs to run their own race and not have right. uh, a national figure come in and endorse them. And I think you'll see that just like you did with Governor Cuomo with Secretary Clinton. I think you'll see some other races that Secretary Clinton and perhaps President Clinton will, will participate in. They've been pretty judicious about staying out of the primaries, although the, the Cuomo race was a, uh, a different one in that case. And I think you'll see the same thing with President Trump. You'll see some Republican candidates, some moderate Republicans, uh, in certain purple districts who will not want President Trump to come campaign for them. Well, you know, the issue is, is that we, we keep hearing so much from Hillary Clinton and Nancy Pelosi, House Minority Leader Pelosi, mm -hmm. calling the tax reform Armageddon, the tax benefits to individuals crumbs. Uh, states led by Democratic governors are quietly reaping billions in tax revenue from the overhaul. According to an editorial in the Wall Street Journal, tax revenues in California this year have surpassed the state's $3.8 billion higher than forecast. New York's tax collections, February forecast, by $315 million. Connecticut raking in $1.3 billion, more than its uh, pie-in-the-sky projections. So all those states that had been crying foul because of the elimination of SALT, all the state and local tax deduction. Uh, the editorial writers go on to say this. Many states are now happy to pocket an incidental increase in state tax revenues they can soak their rich without actually raising taxes. So, Mac, what's your reaction to this? 
Well, a number of states, I think, have been both benefited from the tax cut uh, at the federal level, both blue and red states. Uh, and many states, including my own home state of Arkansas, has basically a balanced budget amendment, a constitutional amendment to balance the budget every year. So they've been beneficiaries as well. But I, I think uh, the Democrats, as we've spoken before, they're, they're going to have to do more than just be anti-Trump, anti-taxes. They're going to have to have a good message right. and a strong message. Some of the local candidates in, in particular races have done that, and they have been successful when they've done it. That's what Governor Bredesen will certainly try to do in Tennessee. All right. We will leave it there. Mac, it's always a pleasure to see you. Thanks so much. My pleasure. Mac Thank McClarty you. Mac McClarty joining us there.